Welcome to the world of Spark Realtime Solution, SRS Guru. This is Prakash Pandin and we are going to talk about types of malware and antivirus in this video. This is my first video. If you have any suggestion, feedback or if you want to point out any mistakes, please add your comments which will help me to overcome these issues in my upcoming videos. So before we start the session, I would like to start with a Tamil poet called Thirukural. It's a two line poet which contains a lot of meanings. Let's see one of them. Anbum maranum mudaitayin ilval kai panbum payanum adu. So I hope you guys are very curious to know what is the actual meaning of this particular poet. The meaning of the poet is if your married life is filled with true love and moral value, then it will lead your life very disciplined life and it you, you can achieve the purpose of the life. So do you see that? Just two lines which gives more information. I would recommend each and every one of you to go through at least one poet in a day uh, which definitely make a change in your life. So that's for moral. Let's go to our PPT, the PowerPoint presentations about malware and antivirus. What is malware? A malware is a piece of software program which was designed by hackers or crazy fun loving people in order to make your life more miserable by putting your business down. This collection of malware software is called as malicious or you can call it as a malicious software called malware. In a market there are different type of malware programs it is, is there. So in that most common type of malware are virus, worm and uh, trojan and trojan hearts and everything. So today we are going to discuss about those type of uh, malware programs, those, those type of malware and what actually it do. Let's start with a virus. What is virus? A virus is a piece of man-made code which can damage your files, uh, which can harm your computers and which can open a back door for others to get into your computer to steal your personal information. So normally this file will link or attach with other files in order to spread from one computer to another computer. It means it requires an mediator because it cannot execute by itself. So most of the time it will be attached with an exe file. Only when user execute the file it will infect your machine. <coughs> that's, that's about the virus. So here are uh, some of the points which are taken from different source uh, which can give a lot of meaning what is uh, about the virus. So I'll just give a, I'll give us 30 seconds uh, if you can go through those points. I hope it could be more helpful for you guys. I hope, uh, I think you guys uh, had enough look. So normally this virus does not require, um, no, this might be getting to your mission without your knowledge and it will run against your will. That's the primary goal of any kind of virus uh, malware. So we done with virus, now we are going to talk about worm. So what is worm? I would say worm is a subclass of virus. It's exactly do the same as like virus, but it has uh, ability to replicate itself. Unlike, unlike like, uh, like virus, 
warmth does not requires an a uh, human interaction or human uh, or uh, additional support to execute by itself so once your computer is infected by a warm it will self replicate itself and then it will start spreading from one mission to another mission through the vulnerable source so if your operating system is not patched with the particular patches then it may get into your missions very easily from your missions it will try to scan other missions to find out whether those missions are vulnerable and if it is vulnerable then it will get into those missions very easily through that vulnerability and one of the fine example of worm is email so once your computer is infected by an worm so what it will do normally is uh, it will try to get as much as informations in your contact in, uh, address and then it will replicate into a multiple worm and each worm will go each worm will be sent to your sent to the people who is there in your contact address and this will goes go on and on for uh, for every user who is getting affected by this particular worm so once your computer is infected or affected by a worm the memory usage of your cpu will be go high and your your traffic web traffic will be also high because it's sending lot of information via internet so that's the uh, main thing about the worm and uh, now we can have a quick look about trojan horse so and unlike uh, virus and worm trojan does not replicate uh, itself or it doesn't spread from one mission to another mission the main purpose of trojan horse is to destroy your computer and open a back door for others to get into your computer so a trojan horse how i'm getting trojan horse how my computer is infected by a trojan horse is always a big question mark for lot of people because they say uh, the i followed the rules uh, my company norms and conditions but uh, still i got a trojan horse a trojan horse always looks like an, a good uh, legitimate software it never looks like an, a fake applications so uh, when when we are finding something which is seems to be very legitimate we always have such a confident okay let's go through that link or let's go through that application so uh, as soon as most of the time it will be embedded along with some uh, application which we love like gaming applications or some videos or other things so we may think that we are playing game but at the back side it will it might be injected your computer in there so uh, as i said uh, trojan horse does not replicate itself nor it cannot propagate without the end user assistance it cannot be moved from one mission to another mission without end user assistance and the main main intention of all the malware program is to open a back door for others to get into your missions and trojan horse plays a vital role in that so that's about the trojan horse and what we are have to what we are going to do next is spyware and adware so as the, as the name defines a spyware it normally once your computer is infected by an a spyware and even it happens via email or through some malicious website or website which in whenever try to hang on uh, you may get this infection once your computer is infected by an a spyware it will try to uh, it will try to monitor all the activities which you carried out on the particular system and it will be get registered so it can be a keylogger file it can be steal the information from the keylogger file or a keylogger infections can be get into this machine with the help of spyware uh, whatever data which you transferred or whatever uh, entries which you entered which will be get recorded and the same can be sent to the um, no, the hackers uh, for them or uh, to get control of your mission or to stop or put a pause to your business similar uh, similarly uh, adware so adware is nothing but whenever you trying to go through and any websites you may get a multiple pop up the website which is not uh, uh, not maintained or the people who is trying to gain money via website by putting the ads on their page so adware is uh, we do, we don't consider adware 
that much serious compared to spyware, malware, trojan, uh, spyware, trojan, hars, uh, virus and worm. Because uh, in this, adware is just an advertisement from different vendor to promote their product. But still, there is a possible chance where your computer may get infected by an adware and that adware result to opens a back door for others to get into your PC and get infected. So when you try to click on any advertisement, you have to make sure or you have to be 100% confident that you know about this particular product or you know about this particular, you're already familiar with this particular advertisement. Until unless if you don't know just I would say strongly don't go and click on any kind of ad when you're getting from, uh, when you're getting on your internet explorer or when you're trying to run through any games. So just this, this this PPT will have a simple uh, two line descriptions about uh, what is spyware and what is adware. So if you want to have a look, uh, I can give you two to three seconds or thirty seconds. Just uh, go ahead. Uh, I'm not sure whether the 30 second is covered, uh, but uh, I have very less time. Let's uh, go to the next um, malware, which is botnet. So what is botnet? A botnet is name uh, normally called as a zombie army. In your environment, you have a laptop and your laptop is not uh, patched with uh, some certain Microsoft uh, vulnerability patch is not done or a third party application patch is not done and you're trying to do some Google and there was an adware or a malware virus worm, uh, malware or virus whatever it's get into your PC uh, with the help of that vulnerability and that adware will or malware will open a back door for other virus to get into your pc very easily so in that way and man can um, a, a, a man can take control of your machine and he will start scanning all your machines in your environment to check whether those machines are vulnerable to any other applications any other conditions if it if it meets any of those condition then it will take control of those machines so what what hacker is going really going to achieve uh, by doing this particular activity is he will gain information from all the missions it might be your critical server your active directory server or your finance server where you do the business transactions everything will be goes through that particular server or your websites so once it's gained all the required informations are uh, then he will decide uh, what can create a major impact on your network and he will release a malware program or a software that can put down your business very badly. So here are some of the informations which I have been captured from different source uh, which I think more useful or more apt to botnet. So if you want I can walk you through the, uh, the lines or if I, I can take you through the lines or else if you want to go through by your own you can go ahead I can give you another 30 seconds I think 30 seconds is over so the word botnet, botnet, these are the two words which join together botnet. Botnet is a robot, that's your computer and uh, how it spreads via network, that's why it's called as botnet. So in order to overcome or in order to defend against this botnet, I would prefer everyone to patch their operating system, third party applications, whatever they are using, make sure that it is up to date and it's completely protected with antivirus. Mm -hmm. If you miss any one of this, then your computer will be under vulnerability uh, and uh, easily a uh, hacker can hack your mission. And by hacking your missions, he can put your entire environment down. So next thing is a rootkit. A rootkit, 
I would say invisible infection or invincible infection I can also say because it's always in a stealth mode and it's hard to identify this kind of root in, uh, rootkit infection by any anti antivirus program and that's why I'm saying it as invisible as well as invincible so it cannot be destroyed so, so easily uh, it can be destroyed until unless you want to lose your own data so what is rootkit here are some points which I taken from different uh, vectors so if you want to go through those please go through it and I will also walk you through what is rootkit actually does so normally when you're uh, working on any particular missions and uh, if your computer is infected by a rootkit these infections never loads on your soft applications or on your service or process which is running it will loads on your kernel mode so the target will be your kernel mode or a boot sector once it gets into the kernel mode or a boot sector this will start doing its activity like website redirections so whenever you try to access one particular website it may be redirected to some other website where it will prompt you to buy something those kind of root activities can be observed normally when your computer is infected by a virus or else when you log into your missions it will never let you to log in it will use in a pop-up screen and then it will ask you to um, go through certain purchase or buy you have to buy out certain things in order to get into your PC this can be also achieved with the root kit or if your computer is vulnerable or affected by a botnet so once again this root kits can be uh, avoidable this roots can root kit can be stoppable if your missions are completely patched with the recent vulnerability if you are, if you don't patch your operating system with uh, latest patches your applic uh, then you will be definitely a victim for this root kit at least once <coughs> so um, what I have to do when a computer is infected by a root kit even um, in antivirus nowadays they have introduced a lot of uh, features a uh, boot sector preventions uh, how your boot sector needs to be loaded and uh, there is a yearly launch anti malware programs kind of a uh, feature or uh, brings into the picture right now so it will scan your boot sector when it loads so it, can, it will scan your kernel mode when it loads but obviously it will slow down your system performance but uh, in order to protect your environment you have to compromise something that's your system performance obviously so that's that's about the root kit so here are uh, as I said there are a few words about the root kits if you want to go through it please go through it I'll give 30 seconds of time your time starts now okay so now we discussed in detail about some of the common type of malware so how do I control this malware how do I prevent my environment or prevent my life or how do I survive uh, uh, when I have this many virus infections going around uh, me so that's a place we are talking about antivirus so once again antivirus is a software which uh, designed in order to defend against this type of malware so we have a different type of antivirus programs nowadays in the market and that will definitely help us in getting over this particular malware and threats however there are certain infections which we call as a zero day attack where they may have a completely different way of approach than what they do normally in order to get into your missions uh, by overcoming uh, by uh, no by beating up your antivirus program but even that can be avoided if you are 
if you are configured your antivirus programs as per the best practice uh, which was recommended by each and every vendor when they are selling their products so here we go uh, so when I say antivirus uh, we have different type of antivirus programs there in market and down the road we will discuss about each and every antivirus product and how it can be uh, how uh, about its architecture design and about its component in detail so only antivirus can enough to prevent your computer from virus bomb and trojan do you think that's enough but i don't think so because wire antivirus is an endpoint level protections so we need a next level and uh, or else we need an additional defense or additional layer of protection in order to protect your computer from virus and threats so we can make it three category one is web protection and other one is network security and endpoint security so your antivirus plays a key role when it comes to endpoint security there are several antivirus product which can provide this three layer of de defense in a one single console and but there are some particular program which has been designed in order to protect your network with their with their architecture same goes to websites uh, websites so when i talk about endpoint security normally it will be your data loss prevention endpoint antivirus programs can help you to defend your computers on an endpoint level in order to protect uh, to, and give under percentage uh, protections for your data whereas in order to prevent your computer on a network level you should have some softwares like checkpoint firewall cisco and uh, Palo Alto, those kind of softwares can provide you ANA protections on a network layer. And uh, WebSense, uh, BlueCoat, uh, ISA, Reverse Proxy, and those kind of proxy kind of content will can can help you in uh, protect your websites and uh, can control the users what they actually to access and what they are not supposed to access. So apart from that, all three still uh, even if you don't have all three of them still you can defend your uh, still you can protect your computers by doing a regular patching of all the applications which you are using on your mission by doing that you can prevent any kind of infections even a hacker cannot have an ability to get to, uh, you will not have any opportunity to get into your missions so that's all about today's video so in upcoming videos we will talk about different type of antivirus programs and especially I hope we will start with uh, semantic endpoint protections and followed by that we will followed by that we will go with uh, McAfee trend micro trend micro deep security and semantic data center security so that's it guys so i hope this session is very i uh, hope this session is useful for you guys and if you'd like to see more videos please subscribe to my channel srs guru thank you thank you very much